Welcome back. Retired Group Captain Sadiq Shehu is still with us in the studio. Now, just wondering, looking at uh, you know the peculiarities presented by an insurgency, it's not conventional war, and so it's difficult to identify your opponents. And it's even more uh, you know tricky when you're working within you know the territory that the military is supposed to be protecting, for instance. Uh, what are the challenges that your organization has noticed and would you, what do you think the military can do to improve uh, the relationship it has with the civilian populace? Thank you very much. Uh, we at the Center of Civilians in Conflict, protecting civilians is at the heart of our mandate. Actually, this organization came on stream uh, way back when the American forces were fighting in Afghanistan and Iraq uh, through the use of drones. We realized that a lot of civilians have been killed together with the insurgents that they have been fighting. And uh, contemporary research has shown that in modern conflicts, surprisingly, it's 90% 90, 90 of the people that get killed are civilians. That is not to say the life of the other 10 persons who are military people is not important. But the point to make here is that uh, a person who enlists into the military, he knows what he's bargaining for. It is a job that might require you laying down your life. But when we're talking of the 90% who are civilians, so this shows you that the uh, issue of civilian casualty is very, very important. Now, there are always challenges. The challenges are even more when you're fighting counter-insurgency for the simple reason that uh, as a tactics, some of the insurgents, they embed within the civilians. They don't carry any uh, uh, you know, insignia like uniform, which is a requirement of the Geneva Convention that a combatant should distinguish himself so that he is not mistaken for a soldier. They draw their strength by merging with the, uh, with the populace. On the other hand, um, this they use as a tactics. Now, this is incumbent on the professional military people, and it makes it more difficult, you know, not to harm civilians. However, every effort, every effort, Geneva Conventions, other international humanitarian laws and human rights laws have made it incumbent on any fighting force to take all feasible measures, right from planning, conduct of operation and after the operation, all feasible measures to ensure that civilians or civilian objects are not attacked. Now, it makes it very difficult, like I said, when you're in a counter-insurgency. However, there are tools, there are processes, there are procedures, there are policies that when you put them in place, they mitigate the possibility of harming civilians. That is why the Center of Civilians in Conflict has worked with several other armed forces for example, we work with the American Armed Forces in Iraq and Afghanistan. We work with the African Union in Somalia, where there was incident of high collateral damage. When are, you, are you working with the Nigerian military? We are working. We are collaborating. We are at the beginning of a very good collaboration. Like, for example, uh, I hate to say it as if we foresaw an incident like this to happen. November 21 to 23, we held a high-level dialogue, tagged, uh, enhancement of civilian harm mitigation policy and practice, which was attended by over 200 military, paramilitary, and uh, other security agencies, including members of the parli Nigerian parliament that were there. So there is this beginning collaboration with the military. We are poised, based on our experience with other armed forces, to assist not only the Nigerian military, mind you, all security forces, because even if you take out the current insurgency, we do have a uh, internal security operations in Niger Delta against. You always hear once in a while that people who are not lawbreakers have also been, uh, you know, harmed through operations. And we recognize the fact that when we talk, the harm we are talking at civilian in conflict is harmed that is called accidentally. We are not talking of areas where deliberately a security personnel goes and shoots somebody. No, we are talking about a professional security man trying to carry out his mission, but in doing so, he inadvertently or accidentally harmed a civilian. In the aftermath of this RAND bombing, you've mm -hmm. called for compensation for some of the, vic for the victims yes. uh, that were involved. Mm -hmm. uh, would you be disappointed if that doesn't happen? Because it would seem that the, the language you're getting, we've, we've not heard so far uh, talks of compensation from many quarters. Uh, at the center of civilians, not only in Nigeria, but everywhere over the world, we try to advocate amend. We call it amend. That is the word we call it. Amend, we want to differentiate it from somebody feeling being harmed 
and he takes the military or security forces to court. We are not talking of that one. No. We are talking in a place where the government itself acknowledges that a citizen has been harmed, though not intentionally. First, our motto is uh, recognize, prevent, protect, and make amends. Uh, to be honest, we have seen the recognized part of it. Again, when we take back in the when, when we take back in our recent past, it is not always that the security forces even acknowledge that somebody has been harmed. It is just taken as an outcome of uh, operations. But here we have seen no less a personality than the commander in chief and the president acknowledging that yes, indeed, something has happened. We have then the the chief of defense staff talking. We have seen the chief of air staff. We have seen the chief of army staff all talking along that line. So we have taken care of that recognized, which is part. Now, another evolving best practice is this issue of amend. Issue of amend, again, I want to understand. When you say amend, it is just so that the civil-military relation can be improved. And then the, city, the citizens will be assured that what happened was not a deliberate act. It is just something that happened out of accident. But then, when somebody loses a breadwinner, when somebody loses his source of livelihood, it, we find that it, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense after recognition to pay amends. Do you think it will be a grave mistake if no amends are given uh, on the part of the Nigerian government, especially in the case of this bombing in Iran? Well, uh, what brought uh, we, the Center of Civilians, to engage with the Defense Headquarters is that we have had the Chief of Defense Staff saying that the Nigerian Armed Forces want to integrate global best practices. Amend is, a, is an emerging global best practice. Uh, uh, we have to go back sometimes and always quote Americans because they have more wars probably than any country. So they make more mistakes. And uh, by extension, they are the ones who always bring new tools or new designs. Uh, July 4th last year, President Obama signed uh, civilian harm mitigation policy where it is now a policy that wherever uh, 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 civilians are harmed, the American government, either through the military or through any other organization, we have to pay. A policy is good because it brings a coordinated approach. If you don't have a policy, like now, we have been caught up without a policy. Even what is supposed to be paid, who is supposed to be paid, what do you pay somebody who has lost um, a father or a mother? What do you pay somebody who has lost a leg? So a policy that we are envisaging and his global best practice will iron out all this. Things. So that today we have this problem in Iran. If, God forbid, we have it somewhere, you apply the same practice to whatever happens there. And like we said, this uh, you know, encourages good civil-military relations. It also you know, is a sort of closure. Again, when we say amend, uh, Mokpe, we, we are not always talking of financial amend. Because honestly, depending on culture, there are, you might find even cultures who will find it abhorrible to collect money because somebody is killed. So a man should always be culturally appropriate. If it is in an area where people don't collect money for people lost, even if it is, a man could be something as little as a condolence letter signed either by the service chief or signed by the president himself to the family of Mr. X. Mm. We regret J doing Just yes. quickly, I mean, looking at your background as well, do you mm. think that... You know, the military takes very seriously the reports of Human Rights Group and other civil society organizations. Uh, well, I would say they do. Why do I say? Because uh, even by the fact that you react, you react to the reports at a first step, I think that it means uh, something has been touched. A sensitive if you react. If you don't react to a story, it means you don't really don't think, you don't really care. But even reacting... I think it's a sign that uh, they, re they really do take. Well, retired group captain Sadiq Sheho, we have to thank you for coming on Hard Copy. Thank you very much, Mope. Well, that's the program tonight. To send us your thoughts, tweet at CTV Hard Copy or send a mail to hardcopy at channelstv.com. Thank you for watching. I'm Maupe Ogun. See you next time.